Hey gorgeous, it's your girl Olenike Osi here and today's video I want to get a little bit more personal with you and I kind of want to share my own personal story and how I started this whole self love journey. So tune in, it's time to get personal, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I am an entrepreneur so I do have a business, I'm an author, I do have a book and I consider myself to be an influencer as well because I really want to influence women to selfishly and authentically love themselves and it wasn't always like that for me and so I'm 25 right now but growing up you know I didn't grow up with a father in the household so that was one thing I know that really really affected me it was me my mom and my younger brother I have a background of being Jamaican as well and not having a father in my life was something that really affected me and still kind of affects me to this day too because I always felt like dang you know I got one half of the bargain kind of thing I know that sounds a way but I got you know one half of the deal like I didn't get the full family deal I didn't get the two-parent household and I really didn't uh, notice that until like my teenage years and I want to backtrack a little bit but when I was eight I was also molested by a family friend at the time and Back then, I didn't know what molestation was, but I was kind of introduced to sexual things at a young age. And so, knowing that, knowing that I didn't have a father in the household either, when I was in my teenage years, I kind of went out and kind of sought out male attention. And so, I was really smart, really tall, high glasses, long legs, and I did great in school. But, you know, my reputation became known as being like the fast, promiscuous girl in the neighborhood because at 14, that's when I began having sex. And after I began having sex, it was kind of like, okay, cool, this seems fun. Uh, guys like me, I get their intention, and, you know, they stick around for however long. And I didn't know that my reputation was being ruined doing that and, you know, just going around and not really having any self-worth or any value of myself because these guys that I were talk to, they weren't necessarily really the best guys to talk to, let's just say that. And um, <laughs> looking back now, I kind of laugh because I'm just like, mm, what did I see in these people? But at the time, it was really just a way for me to get male attention, a way to me, a way for me to feel love from a male, to feel like somebody was kind of protecting me, right? And Throughout high school, I kind of stopped that. I went on a celibacy journey saying, okay, I'm not going to have sex until I find the right boyfriend or whatever. I wasn't waiting till marriage, but I was waiting till I found the right boyfriend. And um, I met this guy. And he seems really cool. He seems really dope. And um, we ended up being boyfriend and girlfriend for like a little bit. But he still was not a good guy. I'm going to try to know that. He was like thuggish guy. Yeah, I'm just going to say that. <laughs> he was not a good guy. And... Um, I had a friend as well, and it turned out that me and her had the same boyfriend. Yeah, and so I was like, okay, the plan was for me and her to both break up with him. That didn't happen. She ended up staying with him, and I ended up breaking up with him, but he still wanted to come back with me. And at that time, uh, I had to ask my younger brother, I was like, oh, do you think that I should go back out with him? And my brother was like, no. And he's my younger brother, by the way. He's like a year, one year younger than me. But you see, like, I had to ask my younger brother if he thought, if he thinks it was a good idea for me to go out with a guy that wasn't faithful in the beginning. Because for me, I was still like, oh, okay, well, you know, maybe I should still go back out with him. And so looking back now, I can still see that I did not have a high self-worth or self-value of myself at the time either because I was actually still thinking about getting back with this dude. And so, yeah. Fast forward, met another dude, um, we ended up dating off and kind of, actually ended up marrying him and um, that was cool for a little bit. I will say the relationship was good for a while, it was good for a while, but then um, I'm a person that's like, that likes to transform, I'm a person that changes a lot, I'm a person that when I have good ideas I like to act on them and so within that relationship that's not how my ex-husband was, he was more like he wants to do this, he stays like this. And so if I'm here changing, he's like, why are you changing and blah, blah, blah. And so he really wasn't for all of my ideas that I like to go out and do. And so one day we got into a really, really bad argument. And at one point from the argument, I had to ask myself, you know, well, if I had a daughter, you know, 
would I want my daughter to stay in this relationship? And in my head, I was like, no, I wouldn't. And so I ended up moving out that night. But again, like if you can see the pattern, I'm still like not asking me, hey, Vanessa, do you think it's a good idea to be in this relationship? Hey, Vanessa, do you think that you should be dating this dude? It was not like that. It's like, oh, well, asking somebody else or asking if I had a daughter or somebody else in my place to see if this is a good thing or not a good thing to do. Like, I just didn't really put myself in my own shoes and gave myself that authority to be like, no, Vanessa, like, this is not a good situation. I wouldn't want you to be in a situation. Not that you wouldn't want your daughter to be in a situation. And so, yeah, got divorced, that ended. And even before the divorce, I was starting to really develop um, my self-love, my confidence. I was reading books on crystals and healing and womb work and yoni work and women knowing themselves. And for me, that was really good information. And I think that every woman should be learning this stuff. And so from that, you know, knowing that information, I still had work to do on myself because apart from my past when it came to like bad relationships or sleeping with the wrong guys or whatever, I was still one of those people that would give, give a lot of my energy. And so I would, I would definitely like to characterize myself as a goal, a goal getter. Like I like to have an idea and I like to go and I get it. Like I like quote unquote success in my idea, my ideals of what success is. And so I would have a lot on my plate even though and even though i had a lot on my plate i would still take more on my plate you know what i'm trying to say and so for me that's not quote unquote selfishly loving yourself that's not loving yourself because you're tiring yourself out and so for me i had to learn to kind of step back a little bit analyze my situation and see what makes me happy see what i actually could take on if i wanted to take it on and if it allowed me to feel good within myself and so how I kind of started this whole self-love thing is like I want women to put themselves first. I want them to put themselves in their own shoes and give themselves permission to love themselves. Give them give themselves the permission to let things go if it's not working out and give themselves the permission to say no. And so when I talk about like selfishly loving yourself, it's more than like the word selfish. A lot of people look at the word selfish and look at it like it's a negative thing, but I kind of want to transform that and I want to transform that into a positive thing for women. And that's why I say selfishly love yourself. And so that's just a little bit of my background. If you're new to my YouTube channel, definitely subscribe. If you haven't uh, subscribed, add me on Snapchat. If you have not added me on Snapchat, Olenike OC, comment below and let me know your number one thing that you are working on or struggling on right now when it comes to your own self-love. I'll be having more videos soon. I love you.